So chemical bonding is simply defined as this. It's a force of attraction that makes atoms or groups of atoms come together to function as a unit. A force of attraction. So if you've got an atom here and an atom here, why would they want to bond in the first place? Atoms bond to be able to lower their amount of energy, to achieve a lower energy state. That's the reason everything bonds. It's to achieve a lower energy state. And that actually contributes to the increase in entropy of the universe. That's later. But the deal is that, well, first of all, what actually is that force of attraction that keeps these uh, uh, atoms together and makes them attracted to one another? The idea is electrostatic principle, which is positive charges are attracting negative charges in one atom and vice versa. So how does that happen? Well, you've got protons in the nucleus of one atom and you've got electrons over here. And what's happening is they're attracting one another. And as they attract one another, energy is being released. And when bonds form, energy is released. And it's always released when bonds are formed. And then, see, when, when a bond is formed, Okay, energy is released to achieve a lower energy state, but then to break a bond, you got to add energy to break a bond. And that's always true. So when bonds form, energy is released. To break a bond, energy is required. So the protons here are attracting the electrons here. As they come closer and closer and closer together, energy is released, released, released. But you know what? If they come too close together, the protons here and the protons here are going to get so close, and the electrons too, by the way, uh, electrons here and electrons here, that repulsions start to take over. So that's too close, and energy would be required to keep them together. So there's going to be somewhere along the line a happy distance that a molecule is going to achieve. These atoms are all going to come together, whether there be single atoms uh, and, or groups of atoms coming together, to function as a unit. That's what chemical bonds are forces of attraction that keep molecules together and make them function as a unit, atoms together. So they're coming together, energy is released, oh it's going to be required, oh now it's released, required, and finally they come to a point where they are at a happy distance from each other when they're bonded together. And that's simply called the bond length. That's what we define bond length as. It's that place where that maximum amount of energy is released and there's very little repulsions. Although, a bond is not something that's a static thing. It's quite dynamic and there's no stick in between the atoms or anything like that. It's just forces of attraction that are keeping them together and it's constantly vibrating all the time. Unless you're at absolute zero and we really can't get there anyway, right? So there's always going to be that vibrating between atoms in a chemical bond. Now look, if you have two hydrogen atoms coming together, boy, that's that, to make H2, that's a, that's, that's a bond where the protons of one is going to get attracted electrons of another, and as a matter of fact, in this case, it's hydrogen, so it's one proton here attracting one electron here, and then vice versa. The attraction's pretty equal, isn't it? Because it's one to one, proton to electron. And so when that bond forms, that bond here, and by the way, what's happening? Well, see, if you think about it, the protons here are attracting electrons here, and as the atoms come together, the place where the electrons are going to be are going to be positioned in between the two nuclei of the atoms, and that's a nice place for the electrons to be, and actually, the lowest energy position for them to be in is between the nuclei. And that's what a chemical bond is. It's going to be two electrons being shared between nuclei. Now you put third electron in there and the thing's going to fly apart. Two of them can actually be in the orbital together between the nuclei, but not three. So the deal is, what are they doing when you've got an H and an H attracted to each other? What's happening with the electrons there? They're being shared very equally. And when electrons are shared very equally between two atoms, that's called a non-polar covalent bond. Covalent because they're sharing electrons, and in this case, covalent bond because um, it's, an, it's a, it's a non-metal attracted to a non-metal. Ooh, now we're going to talk about covalent versus ionic and what that means in just a second, but you know what? Bonding is bonding. So you say, oh, there's covalent bonds and ionic bonds. Yeah, but it's all, it's just, just protons attracting electrons. That's all what it's about. But there's a, there's a difference between the, the ability to be able to attract the electrons, and that's what we've got to talk about right here. So that's going to be a non-polar bond. Why is it non-polar? Because poles mean that there would be a positive end and a negative end uh, in a molecule, and this one doesn't have it like this one here. And what do I mean by that? 
when you've got a hydrogen and a fluorine coming together, ooh, you know what? Fluorine, you know it's got nine protons in the nucleus because it's element number nine on the periodic table and hydrogen's element number one. And if you think about electrons being shared in there, fluorine is saying, hey, hydrogen, you know what? I got more of an attraction for the electrons that are in that bond between us than you do. So I'm taking them closer to myself most of the time. Hydrogen says, well, I guess I can't stop you. So if that's the case, then this bond right here, where fluorine has more of an attraction for the electrons in the chemical bond, you're going to have a region here where fluorine takes those electrons more, and partially negative is what we say that the fluorine atom becomes, and the hydrogen becomes partially positive. That doesn't happen here, of course, because it's equal sharing. So if that's called nonpolar. What is this called? Because it's got a partially negative and positive region, those are polar because there's two poles, a positive and a negative. And that, again, is a polar covalent bond. And it all has to do, these, these bonds and their polarities have to do with something called electronegativity, a scale that was actually refined, devised, invented by one great chemist of the 1900s, Linus Pauling. Here's a little bit about electronegativity now.